Hey, how you doing out there? This is Stiletto coming at you from the wild, wild west. I hope everybody's doing okay out there. And today we're going to do a video, a disassembly video, on my clever girl. Why? Because she's developed a tiny little bit of up and down blade play. I mean, it's very slight. It doesn't mess with the function or anything like that. It's just that when I first got this knife, it didn't have any blade tick. Yeah, I just want to find out what's going on with it, what's wearing out. It's because something I feel is wearing out. I have a funny feeling it's a deadbolt. Because I bet you, I'm, I bet you that this deadbolt is a softer steel than the blade. And they might do that on purpose so it won't mess up the blade tang. But anyway, let's find out. And you know, it's probably my fault because I've been flipping it out and playing with it and constantly, like I did all my other knives when I first got them, like a. Uh, like the 391 and the, the Vision XR and and what else? All my cold steels and, and the and the um Spider Co. and the Benchmade Contigos. I've played with those main times. And none of them have ever developed any up and down blade play. I have a funny feeling that this doesn't self-adjust as it wears. I have a funny feeling that's what's going on with that. And if that's the case, it's like a lot of the older knives. Like the older lock backs, they didn't self adjust either, and so they would wear. And that was one of the things that was kind of funky about a lock back back in the day is that you know eventually you would get up and down blade play. Like my old, my old um, Buck 110 that I used to carry that I had since I was like ninth grade that my father gave me, it has up and down blade play. Work functions just right, it's never failed on me or anything like that, but it does have up and down blade play. Just slightly, the one I say up and down blade play. I don't mean like it's like all sloppy or anything. It's just you could you can take it like this. If you grab this one back here, you can't feel any blade play. But if you grab it by the tip, you can feel it like a little tiny tick. But anyway, let's get busy on this one. On this one, I watched a bunch of disassembly videos on it so I could figure out how to do this. And basically, it's pretty simple. These are actually probably one of the easiest ones of service out of all the ones that have like push button locks or or like the, the, the crossbar lock. This is a lot easier to maintain than a crossbar lock from what I've seen. Because all what you should have to do is take this out and underneath here will be a coil spring. And then you push out the, the dead bolt and then you take a flathead screwdriver and loosen up the pivot and take out the pivot screw and then the blade will come out and it should expose the, the bearings and so we can see the blade tang. Anyway, it's time for it's time for Dr. Stiletto to do his surgery. <laughs> Here we go. You don't have to take apart the handle. And the one reason why is because this handle is not skeletonized. And so there's really nothing to get caught up in here. It should be easy to you know keep clean once you take the blade off you just you know make run a rag through it or whatever and it should be clean you shouldn't really you don't really need to take off these handle scales i saw some other people taking off handle scales and that's unnecessary unless you're trying to do something with the handle scales maybe but i'm not gonna i'm not gonna go that far with it because i don't need to go that far with it okay here we go this is a t8 yeah, I'm gonna hold this down so it doesn't pop out. Cause it's in there under spring pressure. There we go. One piece there. There's the spring. And now the dead bolt should be able to stick this in here and the dead bolt should just pop out. Oh, I can see where on the dead bolt dead bolt already. Okay. Let's take a let's see if there's any damage to the or I shouldn't say damage, just say any wear to the blade tang. We'll find that out too. This is super easy to, to maintain. That's probably one that it's even easier. I would say it's even easier than a than a than a triad lock. And this should just slide out. There we go. Those are the bearings. They're caged bearings. I 
I can see where the detent's rubbing on the blade. And I can see where the bearings have been rolling around on the blade tang. But other than that, there is nowhere in any of these contact points where the where the lock bar or the dead bolt would contact with the blade. So it must fit in like this way. So I'm going to see this like that, Maybe like this. Boom, right there. The blade looks perfectly fine. The blade tang looks perfectly fine. I don't see anywhere on that one. And this one, I can see, see some shiny spots. I'm going to get a rag. Let's see what I'm working with here. But it looks like it's hasn't worn a whole lot though. It looks like it's right there. It looks like it's a little bit rounded off right here. Looks like it's hitting hard right at this point right here. Let me see if I could just use this as a pointer. Right here and right here on this side. Let's see if you can see that. See the shiny spots where the finish is worn off? I think that's where it's hitting at. A little bit right in there. But some of it's just wearing the finish off. I don't think it's, I don't think this is a weak piece. I think it just has a little bit temper than the, the blade tang. It's mainly right here. These two points right here, right here and right here, that looks like they have the most wear. So that would be my guess. And so I think the email I sent to SOG is probably pretty correct. There you can see the detent. See how easy this is to clean? This is a super easy knife to clean. If you had to clean this in the field, it would be okay. It would be a lot easier than some of the other knives. You just run a rag through here and get any dirt and gunk out of here. Because I was sort of wondering if it might have got dirty too, because it's had a lot of pocket time. I don't know if you can tell, but like the paint, the finish is starting uh, the wear right here, where it rubs against my pocket. A little bit right here too. And a little bit right in here. This this is this handle's still pretty stout without the, the blade in it. Very nicely made. Columbia River Knife and Tool really did a good job of making this knife. If that's the problem, and if CRKT 
sends me another uh, piece. I'll just stop flipping it so hard. Because I have been flipping it really hard, playing with it probably more rougher than I should have been playing with it. I saw Jimmy Slash, he was trying to do some destruction stuff on his, you know, testing the lock. And I saw that he developed a little bit of blade play, but I could see why he did, though, because he was, like, doing some crazy stuff with it that I wouldn't do with a, one of my knives. But I am the type of person that will fidget. I fidget with the knife. I don't, on my cold steels, and I like to fidget with them and play with them and, and familiar, my, familiarize myself with them, get muscle memory built up to them. If I need a little bit of calluses here and I like to develop the calluses because these are my emergency tools. If shit hits the fan, I like knowing I have the backup in my pocket. And I want to know how to use it, use it without thinking about how to use it. And so the way that you do that is that you got to play with it all the time. Because then you just get turned into a natural. Like I see people that still can't open these things. And to me, this is an easy knife to open and close. I don't know what they're talking about. They can't open and close. Like uh, there's somebody on Blade HQ. The heavier guy, I forget what his name is. But he, he says he can't open and close a, a triad lock. What's up with that? Come on, guy. You're supposed to be a knife guy on TV. How come you can't open and close a triad lock? It's not a hard lock to figure out. The only thing you have to know is, is that when you close it, you keep your finger up here closest to the blade tang as possible. So you catch it like that, and then you just flip it around and close it. It's not hard to do. Then you're just trying to make it look like cold seals are hard to fidget with. They're not hard to fidget with. They're not the easiest ones to fidget with because yeah, there's a couple steps that you have to take, whereas like you just don't flip it back and forth. That's true. But once you learn how to do it, it's not hard to do. They're easy to open one-handed. One, one see a little bit of dust back here. I don't know what that is. Get that out, too. Okay. Okay, well, let's put it back together. We've taken it apart. We figured out what the problem is. Well, I can see, because that's the only thing that I see wearing. And like I said, I've been I've been giving it hell. I've been I've been playing with it real hard. Because it's one way to you know for me to find out you know if it has any bugs in it or if there's any things that you shouldn't be doing with it is to play with it. I don't know, you can call it playing or you can call it train with it or whatever. It's all the same to me. <laughs> My pops used to always say you have to know your weapons. You have to train, train, train. He was a Marine. He caught the end of him and his brother caught the end of War Two in the beginning of the Korean War. World War II, the war in the Pacific. My grandfather fought in World War One. Come from a military family. My stepfather was a Tuskegee Airman. He was a navigator, an officer. And first he was in the Army Air Corps before it was the Air Force. My cousin retired as a command sergeant major in the army. My stepbrother, he fought in Vietnam and Iraq. In Vietnam, he was in the army, and, I, and then he, after he did time in the army, he got out and uh, joined the Air Force, and he was in the Air Force in Iraq. Me, I served in the, in the army. Never saw a combat though. I was a peacetime vet. I'm a peacetime vet. I was in from 1979 to 1985. 
And after that, I worked for the state, state of California. I love this blade. Isn't that a beautiful blade? I think this blade is just beautiful. This is one of my favorite blades. I love the Persian style blades. A lot of people don't like up sweat blades. I love them. I think they're beautiful. They not only look good, they're awesome slashers. And they're good for food prep and everything else too. Good as a hunting knife. Making cut bait. Filleting sardines and mackerel for cut bait so you can catch stripers and big catfish. I live in the Delta area. There's 3,000 miles of waterways where I live. I love to go fishing. That's my main thing I do outdoors is fishing. Absolutely love this. I like this PVD coating too. It's a lot like Cerakote to me. I think it's just like better than Cerakote. I don't think it's as good as DLC. I think it's better than Cerakote. I like Cerakote too though. Alright. Now to put this back together. First we're going to put the bearings back in. Everything's been all cleaned out. Put a dab of oil on them. Well behind it too. You hold the bearing in there, flip it over, do the other side. Oops, a little bit too much oil there. That'll be all right. Now all I should have to do is just slide this in here. Until I can see the hole. Right there. Is this easy or what? I don't want to make it super tight. Let's have it tight all the way and back it up just a touch. Centered up perfectly. Feels like it should be a little bit looser. No blade play at all. Maybe that's the reason why I got a little bit of blade play too. Maybe I had it, maybe it was getting loose. Cause now I don't feel any side to side at all. Let's leave it like that and see if that's what it was. Come over here and do this side. Well first we gotta put in the the dead bolt. Hold that in there with my finger. Put this in. This is so easy. This is a super easy knife to maintain. Way easier than any of the uh, crossbar lock type knives. I would say it's even easier than, than a triad. I think the triads are easy. That's, that's together. Wow, that was so easy. That was so easy. Easy like a Sunday morning. No, I'm not a singer. <laughs> like Lionel Richie would say, yeah. Easy like a Sunday morning. Perfectly centered. It's, it's even less blade tick now, though. 
It's almost like there isn't any blade tick now. Wow, I, don't, I would say there's not any blade tick now. I don't feel like what I was feeling before. Hmm. So maybe the pivot came loose. Maybe the pivot came loose. It's definitely closing not as um, easily as it was before. Let's adjust the, the detent. So this is how you adjust the detent right here. I'm going to loosen up the detent a little bit. And it's got a little tiny bit. It's not as bad as it was before. It's just got a little tiny bit. Sort of when loosen back up the, I think I want to make it a little bit looser on the on, on the blade. Adjust it again. I love the way you adjust these and maintain them though. I really like the CRKT with the Flavio Kuma. Deadbolt lock. I like the deadbolt lock. Let's see what that works. Okay, there we go. Now it's just. That's the way I like it. Still no side to side. Okay, we'll leave it right there. Probably should put some. Um, but I'm not going to. But I, was, I was thinking I should probably put a little bit of Loctite on it. But I'm not going to because I want to be able to take it apart and adjust it if I want to. Oh, i got to put the deadbolt in first. Super easy knife to maintain. I love this knife. I actually love it. I love it. I would highly recommend the the new deadbolt knives. I bet you they're all nice. They just need to start using some better steels. I love the D2. It'd be great if they used D2 in all of them. There we go. It's a fidgeter. I'm not going to fidget hard with it anymore though. I don't want to make the up and down blade play even worse. I don't want to wear out the deadbolt even more. Because I don't know if, if I'm going to be able to get another deadbolt to replace that deadbolt part. Yep, now I can feel a little bit of blade tick. So I think a part of it is um, the tang being loose. I mean, uh, the pivot screw being a little bit looser. I love this knife. I absolutely love it. I love it so much. It doesn't, I, I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't trip on the handle not being super comfortable. And I, don't get me wrong though, that, that shape of the handle is perfectly fine. It's just right around here, it needs to be rounded off or smoothed. I don't need to have all that right there. And same thing on the back side. And, you know, eventually I might change it a little bit. I don't know. We'll see. But right now, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be... Whoa! I love this one. And it's easy to open with the, the thumb studs or the, the flipper. I just you'd like to use the flipper. I have lots of knives with thumb studs. Not that many with flippers, though. And I love the flipper. Ever since uh, the Luzon... The cold steel lose on. 
That's the one that turned me on the flippers. The cold steel lose on. That was my first flipper knife. And those are cool too. It's just not really me because I don't like the big... I'm not a grivery handle person. I, I, the only handle, knives I really carry with the grivery handles are the... Um, the Tonto Voyagers. I always have one in my backpack that I take to work every day. My bug out backpack and I always have one in, this, in my... Uh, my fanny pack. And I carry my nice knife in my pocket. These are nice. I love the button. The button is so big, you know, like the Hogue buttons is like, sometimes you get it confused with the, uh, with the pivot and everything because everything's like almost like the same size and they're close together. But this one just has one big button. It's hard to miss this one. I mean, even if you're blind, you'd be able to because <laughs> it's like one big button and it makes it so easy. It's like in the perfect place too, perfect position. Okay, that's it for this one. We figured it out. Absolutely love it. Everybody, if you haven't done so, go to the Knife Center and get you one of these. I love these knives. The, the Clever Girl. I've got all the ones I want. I want. I got four of them now. Not four Clever Girls. I got two Clever Girls and two Seismics. I like the Seismic too. And the Seismics, they, they've come down on price. Even on the, um, so, uh, not the side, so, but the CRKT website, they're $99 on straight from CR, CRKT. So they come down the price. It used to be $119 or $120. They brought down the price because probably because people are complaining about the steel. It's not the lock, it's the steel that, that you know people are complaining about. And I love the way the size mix made too. It's got the G10 handles. I just wish it had better steel, but that's cool to have one that that, that won't rust. So like if you if you have both of these, the clever girl, the D2 one, D2 will rust. But, you know, with this PVD coating, it's going to be hard to make it rust. So, you know, the edge would probably rust, but I don't think the blade would as long as it's coated. But the Seismic, I really like that one, too. The Seismic's more comfortable. As more, the, the handle, to me, is a lot more comfortable than the, the Clever Girl. I love the Seismic. I did a video on that one. I'm not sure if I released it yet. I need to release the video on the Seismic. I don't know if I released the video on my Seismic. Yeah, pull out one of the Seismics. I don't have any out right now. So. I love this one. My tools are Craftsman tools. I like Craftsman tools. It's a stand, standard old Stanley uh, screwdriver you get at Ace Hardware. But I like Craftsman tools. Just letting you know what kind of tools I use. Absolutely love it. All right, that's enough. I'm starting to ramble again. My name should be Rambler, not Stiletto. <laughs> Peace out. Y'all have a great day.